All right, my name is uh, Brendan Hughes. I directed Dindin, uh, which was written by my dear friend Brenda Withers, and um, it was uh, executive produced by my friend Jeff Zinn, who's right over there. And it was uh, it was produced by this theater company that Jeff and I are intimately uh, involved with the history of, and we it so it it was a pivot from uh, during the pandemic. This theater company couldn't open its doors, and they decided to make a movie out of a play that was going to be in their season. So I watched the trailer before I knew any of this. And I'm watching it, and I was like, oh, this looks amazing. And I'm thinking, this, I bet this would be a great play. And then I read about it, and I'm like, well, of course, duh. Um, one of the things that, that I'm loving about these conversations I've been having is so many of these films and projects are, are COVID babies. You yeah. know, they, they, you know, they um, were, were conceived, produced during a time of, of turmoil. And it seems like uh, no project, uh, at least that I've heard about, has been um, as affected as, as what you guys did, but then making something incredibly positive about it. But I, I just want to, let, let me set the stage with what I've learned about the genesis of this, and then I want to talk about what that actually means for the actors and the directors. And so you you filmed um, you you finished principal filming on the movie. Mm -hmm. Almost immediately after that, your actors staged the play. Yeah, and then after the play was staged, the movie comes out. Right, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tell me why that doesn't happen first, and then let's talk about how it happened. Oh yeah, yeah. It got me thinking about how like there's the first Wives Club comes out as a movie, and then it comes out as a musical on Broadway, and then yeah. a movie of the musical on Broadway comes out. There's this sort of back and forth that keeps happening. And, right. uh, uh, it was the John Waters movie that same thing happened. But there's this. So the the embeddedness I think of movies and plays is always being toyed with and this right. was completely accidental right because this so this is this comes out of the Harbor Theater uh, or the Harbor Stage Company in Wellfleet Massachusetts mm -hmm. on Cape Cod right there right down the Cape yep um, that fl I could flatten the, the building big, that's it right it. there and uh, it was going to be a play uh, the, so the Harbor Theater is run by two couples okay Brenda and Jonathan and Bob and Stacy and they are also the cast of the movie right Brenda wrote this play this piece Dindin as yeah. a play for the four of them because uh, she wanted to it's sort of a it's a twist on the dinner party as societal microcosm right. story right, right. Um, and she wrote it for them as a play in early 20 fall of 19 early yep. 2020 then they found out they couldn't open their doors for 2020 and uh, they decided to have a zoom reading of it because they couldn't do it that's what all the theater right. companies everyone went to zoom and everyone yeah, went to zoom yeah. exactly um, and the tricky part about that, I always felt, was people are going to work. They turn on Zoom to go to work, so it's tough to make the make them cross to stay the divide. Yeah, like you also can go to Zoom for entertainment. You know and it's I mean? one thing when you're the cast of The Princess Bride coming back 20 years later and doing it, yeah. and it's another when you're totally original. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. And so they came up with really interesting ways to do this Zoom reading. Um, where uh, when they recorded it, Brenda and Jonathan were in their apartment in New York. Okay. Bob and Stacy were in their house outside of Boston. And they were able to make it feel simultaneous as if these two windows were trained, the cameras were trained on people up across the, um, the table from each other, right. you know? So they would figure out ways to sort of look into the camera and make eye contact and that kind of right. thing. So it was pretty great. And uh, similar to what you were saying, as I watched, I was like, this would make a really good movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. And so, but people have those thoughts and then they move on and like, we'll wait right. till we can stage it. You guys said, no, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's actually let's do shoot it. this. Yeah. So they bring you, a, you've directed hundreds of stage plays, mm -hmm. but never a, a feature film like this. Right. So yeah. how did that happen? So they go, got, the, got their hands on that theater space in 2011. Okay. Um, it was part of this uh, legendary theater called the Wellfleet Harbor Actors Theater um, that was helmed by Jeff Zinn, who's sitting right over there, <laughs> <laughs> who was the artistic director. And Jeff uh, built, there, so the Wellfleet Harbor Actors Theater in the aughts yep. was this incredible, and before, was this incredible theater company. It's 199 seats right on the water in this sort of always on the verge of being condemned building where lo the low tide smell comes mm. out of the urinals and stuff like that. Yep. Um, it's just right on the water. You can see the ocean as you walk, as you, you know, at intermission. 
and uh, royalty couldn't get a ticket to any one of their shows. They're doing this really daring, really interesting theater in the summertime on Cape Cod right. for all these retired psychiatrists who live in uh, in Wellfleet right. who want interesting, yeah. difficult fare, you know. And uh, so it's just amazing. It's an incredibly successful theater company, and Jeff took that success and built this beautiful state-of-the-art theater um, out on Route 6 that had like 200, how many seats? 220 seats. Mm. Um, and so then, but there was a groundswell in the town. We love the Harbor Stage, which is this little ramshackle hut uh, that has a restaurant here and then a theater and then two apartments upstairs. Um, don't close the Harbor when you open what became the Julie Harris okay. uh, stage out on the, uh, and so he kept both of them open and he hired me to run the little stage okay. and he was sort of ran it. I was sort of a, uh, we were kind of like this resident company within the larger kind of the empire that Jeff was building. Got it. And uh, so I brought Jonathan, Brenda, Bob and Stacy, who are the cast of Din Din, together in 2008 to, or uh, I was directing all the plays and they were in all the plays. And so they we became did three your summers. Your little company. The little company, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan and Brenda fell in love. Yeah. Bob and Stacy were already together. Jeff brought in Bob and Stacy. I brought in Jonathan and Brenda. We all had the, a ball for three summers making yeah. plays. You know, we'd finish one play, start rehearsing the next one in Wellfleet, which is like an yeah. amazing town. And then, uh, and that, that's, that kind of early, those early days ran their course. A lot of things changed, changed the tectonic plates of culture and art shifted. Yes. Uh, um, Jeff moved on from, uh, from the Wellfleet Harbor Actors Theater. I moved and went to I'm Los to Angeles yeah. um, and got married. And the, those guys, those four, um, in this sort of great sort of jumble of like things were tossed in the air, Wound, uh, were able to sort of get the lease of the little space and launch their own theater company, hmm. which is called the Harbor Stage. So then fast forward 10 years, they're just doing plays with each other, steeping in each other's talents and right. rhythms for 10 straight years um, when this all, all of this happens. And so they had enough of a war, war chest, I guess, to be able to make to be able to shoot this movie. And they called me after 10 years. I had been in LA for 10 years. They right. called me and they were like, hey, you want to come back and yeah. direct us in a play? Uh, or direct us in a movie? And I happen to be married to a cinematographer of, um, okay. who, who I, I'm biased, but I consider to be a world-class cinematographer. And so uh, she was, they might, maybe they were roping me in because she would be part of the package. <laughs> this is our way to get, okay. get, they can get to Emily through me. Yeah. Uh, I just have to come, I have to be part of it, you know? So we, uh, we threw the whole thing together. We filmed it in Bob and Stacy's house and uh, we, it was 12 days of filming, yeah. um, and it's a very claustrophobic story. Sure. You know, people talking yeah. uh, around a dinner table. And it feels like know. the camera is just getting closer and closer and closer on them. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you, and you just feel more and more yeah. trapped. But it's also funny at the same time. Oh, of course. It's like a sinister yeah. um, uh, something. Or just like it's, it's, uh, it's got fangs, but you laugh, you know? So the, I, the backstory all makes sense because the chemistry is off the charts for them. Thank I mean, you. you it's, um, you, there is this instant familiarity um, mm -hmm. you can sense with each other, which instantly pulls you in. It's like, okay, how, how does this resonate in yeah. what's going on in that, in that space? How does, even though, you know, this, this small set, very personal, I, practically claustrophobic set, could be mimicked as a stage, I'm imagining the directing is still different. I mean, so what, what were the differences? What was the learning curve for you, having been a veteran stage director? Oh. Directing veteran stage actors mm -hmm. all for camera. Yeah, that was a fascinating thing. There are many things that, many roads I didn't take that I thought I would take originally. I thought, for instance, because my wife, Emily Topper, um, mostly shoots verite documentary. Okay. She's an incredible, there are very few cinematographers that, that can cut it as verite, partly because of, they have to be like Marines. You right. know? And uh, she, uh, I thought maybe I'll just, they can just do the entire thing from beginning to end and she should just roll Just be there. And yeah. just catch what she catches, yeah. you know? Um, but on the one hand, and then I thought, but I, I wonder if that will instill kind of a false urgency and take away from the mm. language. Like it's a, it almost felt like it might be a cheap trick to because handheld can can immediately create a lot a sense of urgency right. that um, that might be unearned. Right. But I knew we could earn 
with the performances. Right. And so then I thought, or if we go in the other direction where I'm very patient with the camera. But to answer your question, the, the learning curve comes in, and, the, and my, wife's, my wife Emily was very useful on this, where the camera always has a point of view. Right. But the audience is just watching the other side of the room, you know? Right. So in, in a play, in a play, the, there's just the big opening right. through it. That's the camera, you right. know? But this uh, automatically by virtue of putting it in a place and ex whatever your the point of view is almost about what isn't in the frame. Right. And what you're excluding. Excluding, of course. And so that was uh, a fascinating challenge. It took me months to kind of just get my head around. Become comfortable with that. And, become and realizing exactly. how to manipulate that empty space. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's all about what you leave up, leave out at the end of the day. So what has, um, now that you've, you've had this experience, um, what's your, do, you, do you feel like, oh my God, I need to be in this? in this medium um are you or is it like no back to the theater for me or is it ah, i, I want to play in both sandboxes oh that's a great yeah that is a great question i would love to be i mean this was really fun okay it's very there's a lot more so here's the thing though film there's a lot more solitude and a lot more spreadsheets than the theater <laughs> <laughs> so yes. the management of because i did all the i produced all of the yeah. post-production and everything like right. that too so there so um, we edited it at my house, this brilliant editor named Tim Nakashi, who's a, fil a music video um, editor. One of his music videos has a billion views on YouTube. Oh my God. And that happened while we were watching it. It's the most, <laughs> the most like, uh, you know, <laughs> he's like, hey, hey, how's it going? He's like, click, click. And then he yeah. shows, uh, he showed, we were looking at one of his music videos and I was like, does that say a billion, billion? views? And he's like, oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> anyway, so, um, and it was like Ariana Grande. It's like, yeah. it's very, un but he's very unassuming. It's hilarious. Anyway, he's wonderful. We did that all on my back house garage thing yeah um, uh, edited the whole thing it's a lot it's a ton of work like the fun part is directing actors for right. me and then oh my god the amount of work afterwards especially if you're doing it on a shoestring we shot right. the whole thing and ran completely out of the money we had yeah. we like it's the and old story how did you get, come to the money to begin with like, I, mean, I can imagine a lot of people have ideas they might have talent they might have access to talented actors but they don't have a clue as to how you raise money, even right. a minimal amount of money, the bare minimum to get, get started. How did, how did you navigate that? Well, the beauty of it, there are two, a couple of things. I think, I, this, I may be wrong about this, but I think they got a little bit of COVID relief money okay. from the state of Massachusetts. Okay. And that helped them keep their, like pay the rent on, right. a, on a building with keep closed locked on. doors, yeah. keep the lights on, yeah. even though they were off for right. a year. <laughs> and then they had a little left over. And so uh, we, so that, uh, and I've been making little short films here and there, yep. and uh, that taught me how to make a dollar out of 15 cents. And Emily right. working at documentary is working, usually working with skeleton crews. I was going to say, yeah, she, so, she had that experience too. Yeah, a hundred, yeah. So she was like, she, there were, there were four cast members, five crew members. Okay. And that was it, including okay. me. Okay. So it was me, me, Emily, sound guy. Uh, two PAs. Okay. And for the whole, and two lights she did for the whole thing. Wow. Because she's so fast. And I would say, right. uh, Emily, uh, this is, we're going to do this. This is that we'd talk together and be like, okay, I think this is, then we'd turn around and we'd, let's get Stacy yeah. uh, and have it dirty with Jonathan. And she'd be like, okay, carry the one. I need uh, 13 minutes. And then she would, and that would run off and come back. And That's 13 amazing. minutes later, she's standing at the camera ready to go. You know? That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so we, so there was some of that, and the theater company put up the first, got us to uh, get, have two hard drives okay. with everything in the can. Then, uh, then Jeff, uh, Jeff came into the picture. There's yeah. Jeff right over there. Jeff, um, he, 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 having so much experience running a theater company and doing the amount, and having built the Julie Harris stage right. over on, you know, having done a huge capital campaign. Um, was really a Sherpa when it came to, okay, we need, we shot it for, we did the entire movie for less than $100,000. Right. So, I don't know, we shot it for like 58. Okay. And then we, and I was doing the math and I was like, okay, I myself, I know After Effects, luckily. Right. So I was like, I can get rid of everybody's zits. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's 2,000. You know, I'll just kind of do the, and so then I was like, okay, uh, I think we I think we just for thirty more, and then we all fanned out, and uh, Jeff uh, sort of led the way, and we fanned out, and we were like, okay, everybody, we need to find people who who love this theater company and uh, our friends and uh, and people like that. And we were able to sort of 
cobbled together the rest Got it. and made it, you know, within an inch of our lives. We had to all hitchhike here to get here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it, and I imagine it's a little different for, for theater directors who are used to being in an audience when they, when they see their product on stage. But I'm still, for first time filmmakers, what is it like to sit in a darkened theater when your film is projected up there and all of a sudden it's not just yours anymore, it's everybody's. Yeah. Um, how, what is that? Are you able to watch your film with other people or is it like, no, I can't, I don't. I, I pace in the back and like okay. gnaw on my yeah. forearm <laughs> okay. the whole time. But uh, well, that's interesting about the theater versus film because it's film, they're always watching the same thing. Right. And theater, it's different every night. Every time. Know? Right. And you're sort of thinking. And there's always a next night. And there's the next time, yeah. exactly right, like, oh, we didn't get it that time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. um, but the funny thing is, the, uh, well, a couple, there are two, I have two answers to this. The first is this phenomenon I noticed where uh, this movie does really well in front of a large crowd. Okay. I think I brought like a stage director sensibility to it where I just, all the, the rhythm of the jokes and the rhythm of the whole thing is sort of meant to be watched by a Place large a group crowd. of people. Yep. Because when people, if you watch the, it, the larger the crowd that watches this movie, the funnier it is. Okay. And the, 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 it, the, the funniness of it sort of precipitously drops the fewer people are in the room. Interesting. I had, a, I had a screening with like my mom and some friends from home and there was about seven people in her living room. Yeah in Boston, it was a disaster. I called it the Boston Massacre. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> like it just ends up being really like this yeah. serious heavy right. thing, but it's not, it's like it's a- It's not supposed to be. Yeah. yeah, you know the movie Buffalo 66? Oh my gosh, yeah. And so, so like, if you watch that movie, if you watch that alone, you'd be like, Oh my God, it would, it would, I can't imagine. Like, yeah. so from when I saw it, I saw it in the theater, because um, at the time that's the only way to, unless you had a VHS. But I can't imagine streaming Buffalo 66 right. by myself. So, yeah, you'd I mean, so, if, if you don't know what's funny, depressed, I'd be. It, yes, yeah. it's yeah. so disturbing, yeah. you know. Yeah. But if you don't know what's funny, there's something about a crowd. Some stranger just like laughs about something. You're like, right. oh, that that is a little bit of me. Yeah. And then you realize you key the same thing with um, Wild at Heart. Yeah. Um, well, which is so disturbing unless you realize it's funny. And then the laughter becomes contagious. And exactly. it gives you license to laugh too. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So it's interesting on two levels. That and then also watching this is the same product with uh, different audiences reacting differently versus a slightly different product with different audiences okay. reacting differently. You know what I mean? I like it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I, again, one of the blessing of the festival is to bring these, bring these films to life in, in theaters. Um, and so I, I can't wait. I, I mean, the, the trailer got me. Um, and again, I would watch it at home if that was the only option, but it's nice to, nice to have a community to, to go watch it with. So thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank for you. Bringing it. And uh, I look forward. I, I'm, I'm, I was thrilled to hear that you want to still um, direct films because because I think uh, you're, you're onto something and, and do what you love, and um, it'll be fun to see what happens next. Thank you, Matt. Great. Thank you, Brenda. Put her there. Yeah. <laughs>